Hey Mochis, every two years, something that I love to do is cheer on my country whenever they participate in the Hunger Games, I mean Olympic Games. But honestly, you couldn't tell the difference if you looked at it. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Today, I am talking about the Paris Olympics, which has been a bit of a roller coaster ride so far. For two weeks every two years, the world's best athletes gather to compete in a global event that has often bankrupted their host. So when Paris was announced to host, they put in a lot of effort into reducing the cost of the games. But has it really been succeeding so far? From the dangers of the Seine to the chaotic opening ceremony, lack of food and just overall disorganization, let's talk about the Paris Olympics. Regarding the opening ceremony, Paris tried to do a little something different this year, having the boats come in through the Seine. And this is honestly the best example of great taste, awful execution. Especially when it started pouring rain during the opening, and the boats literally had to travel like 6 kilometers down. But let's talk about the ceremony itself. The ceremony started with legendary footballer and disher of headbutts Zinedine Zidane, who carries the torch into what I think is the catacombs, before some kids encounter Killer Croc and Assassin's Creed? Don't get what that has to do with France, but okay. The commentators called him the Phantom of the Opera, but we all know who he is, okay? It's Assassin's Creed. But yeah, as a gamer, it was cool to see, I guess. Like, I just can't help but shake the feeling that this event must have been so weird to see live. Like, they're not watching from a stadium where they can see everything, so they have to just use screens like it was some big concert. Because it streams down, like, I've been to races before, NASCAR, F1, drag races. But at least with those, we can see the cars multiple times because they loop around, right? With this ceremony, it was scattered all around the Seine, so the people there watching must have had such awkward scheduling. Speaking of awkward, take a look at what Lady Gaga performance looked like on Descent, like the actual POV. Okay, that was so awkward, and apparently they actually just used rehearsal footage of Lady Gaga. So which makes me ask, for all the athletes just passing by, did, were they just watching a video of Lady Gaga on repeat? Can you imagine paying to sit at the opening ceremony and your entire view is just Lady Gaga singing in French being repeated for three hours? It's like it's a small world, but French. It also took much longer for the athletes to get to where they needed to, and because everyone was in ponchos, I kind of missed getting to see each country's iconic outfit, actually. Although I do say that Paris's way of splicing in the tableaus in between the boats at least kept the ceremony pacing a little interesting, so props to that. But like, can you imagine paying $600 and this is all you see? Roll clip. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know most tickets are free, but there were actually some tickets where you actually had to pay. So, well, this poor soul made a mistake. There was also this little tumble during the opening where they committed the one sin of international sporting events that you cannot commit. The commentators introduced South Korea as, drumroll, North Korea. They are very different, and that's not a mistake that you can afford to make as a professional broadcaster. And what made it worse was that on a lot of these broadcasts, nobody just said anything, nobody realized that they made this mistake, but I guess the IOC has since issued a statement, so okay. That honestly reminds me of that time when Kazakhstan won gold in some event, and then they accidentally played the fake anthem from Borat. Like, guys, come on, there's there's just some mistakes that you cannot make. Back to the ceremony, we have a friend group just perusing through the library, causing a mess as friends do, and then they proceed to make out on the stairs. This then led to a party for three. Some might call it a menage a trois. Trois? I can't speak French. Yes, I know that France is a bit more sexually free. These are all based on stereotypes, by the way. I am no expert on French society. But there's gonna be a lot of kids who tuned in to see the Minions, who will be asking their parents some uncomfortable questions. Also, time and place, I guess. Like, if I was tasked with showcasing my country for an international stage, I'm not gonna jump straight to showing off love triangles, okay? Like, was this Euphoria or the Olympics? Who knows? This literally looks like something that Sam would direct. That all came ahead to the most metal part of the show. 
the Marie Antoinette segment, which featured a headless Marie, to, I gotta admit, a pretty epic rock performance. It was a very metal, quite literally, actually, uh, thing to show, but I guess I kinda question its appropriateness for family-friendly television. But seriously guys, having this tableau in the exact same building where Marie Antoinette spent her last nights, you know her ghost is pissed. Zach Bagans at that thing be like, Are you here with us, Marie? And then she just like throws him down the scent or something. <laughs> this whole ceremony honestly gave Hunger Games vibes, including the sacrifices, and by that I mean the pianos that were stranded in the rain. God, those pianos are so coked after all this. R.I.P. You played well. That's not to say though, despite the capital vibes, there were some inherent silliness that happened at this ceremony, like these performers here. There's also the elephant in the room about the whole Papa Smurf controversy. And there is much debate right now about whether it's supposed to be mocking the Last Supper, or if it's supposed to be the Feast of Dionysus. Honestly guys, I'm too ill-informed to really say anything about that tableau. And just about that whole debate in general, I don't feel like opening up that can of worms. I'll just leave it out there that the Olympics have since came out with statements about this, but the name of the tableau itself was actually called Le Sen sur Le Sen sur Le Sen. Try saying that five times fast. Which literally translates to The Last Supper on the Stage on the Sen. I'll just leave it at that. Um, somebody's got some explaining to do. Let's just say that people really need to get their story straight because reading this, even I'm still confused. But seriously guys, what in the ever-loving f***? was I watching. But yeah, Papa Smurf, if you can just put your little blue men group away, that, that'll be nice. Thanks. Besides some messy dancing, there was also an animatronic horse that ran through the river, which brings me back to one of the biggest problems that I have with this opening ceremony. It took place in the Sen, which meant it took forever. I literally went downstairs to grab food and came back, and that horse was still running. And after all that, though, it was just your typical speeches, um, the Olympic flag hung upside down, and then they lit a fire under one of the missing balloons from up. But uh, Celine Dion did great, though. Like, she actually did. She ate. Overall, I did wish, though, that instead of characters like the Minions, and I'm not kidding about that, that they had more French characters, you know? Like Ratatouille, um, Beast, Belle... Bonhomme de Neige, French Canadian, but still, still French, I guess. But yeah, if I had paid tickets to go see that opening ceremony, I would have asked for my money back. Especially if I was along the banks. Couldn't see shit now, can we? <laughs> Besides the opening ceremony being a complete acid trip, there were also several major logistical problems and other controversies surrounding these games. One of the most famous of which surrounds the River Seine. The French apparently spent $1.5 billion to try and clean it up, but it's not even clean enough to swim in yet, and a triathlon has since been postponed. Two hours later. Well. But yeah, a few days after swimming in the Seine, a few athletes have actually already gotten sick. So, yikes. That river was definitely safe, right? They're about to become Avengers, I'm telling you that. I wonder what their superpower is gonna be, like talking to fish. There was also this whole thing about this athlete who refused to wash his hands and was like microdosing himself with E. coli. Like guys, that's, that's not how it works. Also, Macron, I thought you were swimming in the Zen. What happened to that? Honestly, it's probably a good idea that he didn't. That river is a total biohazard and he'll probably become an X-Man if he swims in there, okay? First mutant president. Go check on the mayor of Paris, actually. She was actually down in the Seine last week. But yeah, like, those E. coli levels, like, you don't want to mess with that. Just watch, like, one dip in the Seine and you come out looking like Deadpool. Looking like an expired avocado. To add on to these problems, there is a lack of food. When you're welcoming over 10,000 athletes, all without adequate food and nutrition, you see how that might be a little bit of a problem. They were so unprepared for all of these athletes. They have planned initially for two and a half meals per day per athlete, or 600 tons of food daily. Well, apparently they were wrong because just in the first few days, they already have a shortage of eggs and meat, both of which are loaded with protein, which is vital for these athletes. And since there's such a big shortage, chefs are literally rationing. Them. These guys literally need like a million calories a day or something. I don't know my nutrition, okay? But rationing this food with the amount of things that they burn, like that cannot be healthy for them at all. 
all. So if some athletes don't perform well because they're underfed, you know whose fault it is. Besides their own if they sucked. Okay, I'm just kidding. Seriously though, feed your athletes. If I'm throwing a party, I'd make sure all my guests had food, okay? I'm not gonna tell them to do a potluck or ration it out to the point where everyone gets like a single peanut or something. But apparently Paris is already looking into this and they have brought more food, so problem solved? For now? Besides food, because we can't have nice things, crime and disruption has also been a concern. An Australian news team was literally mugged and attacked in Paris. And on the day of the opening ceremonies, a major train network was also disrupted by arsonists, and some athletes actually relied on those French rails to take them right into Paris. Vandals also targeted the French telecommunication system, so that seems to be going great, right? Hashtag sarcasm. The Olympic Village itself was also experiencing some issues besides the lack of food. Paris was set to be one of the hottest Olympics ever, weather-wise, okay? Although I am sure there are some absolute stunners during these games. I'm looking at you, mascot. And the rooms are being kept only about 10 degrees cooler than the outside temperature. American degrees though, okay? So that's barely anything. So some countries literally brought their own AC units. And speaking of AC, six Korean swimmers already left the village because the bus that they take to the pool not only has no AC, but the windows were taped shut. And they even got into an accident on the way there. They're literally driving around a giant easy bake oven. At least the sports seem to be running just fine besides not being able to use the Sen. Wait, I'm getting a message. The fans did what? So during the Argentina-Morocco soccer game, fans stormed the pitch and threw bottles, which forced the game to be suspended for about two hours, and then they played the rest of the game to an empty stadium. Talk about a tough crowd. There was also a scandal about the Canadian women's soccer team, and their coach sending a drone to watch the New Zealand team practice. All I'm gonna say is, that wasn't very smart, was it? Even if you wanted to watch the practices, there were much easier ways to do this. I'm Canadian, okay? I can talk about it. Everyone else though, keep my country's name out your f***ing mouth. But like guys, come on, it's the Olympics, okay? It's supposed to show unity, good sportsmanship and all. Keyword being supposed to. Paris was also supposed to be well organized and well prepared for this event. And honestly, it is not off to a very good or organized start so far. The games are running smoothly though, and there's also a couple of athletes that I'm already so glad to see winning medals. And we're only about halfway into the Olympics so far, okay? So who knows, they could still pull off something great yet. But yeah, like they better make sure that there's no other like logistical problems, okay? This is like a lip sync for their legacy year, okay? But yeah, I know I spend a lot of time talking about the opening ceremony itself, and I'm sure the closing ceremony is gonna be just as batshit insane. But does anyone else feel that Beijing set the bar so high? high for opening ceremonies that everyone else just looks off in comparison. With that said though, it was cool to see the sights of Paris and how they creatively used these venues. Since Olympic venue usage and cost has always been a point of controversy surrounding these games. Also both BTS's Jin and Snoop Dogg got to be torchbearers, that is freaking cool. You know, Paris might surprise me just yet. Just please feed your athletes, okay? Tom Daly's got to eat. Throw some more baguettes their way or something. Anyways, my mochis, what team are you cheering for on the Olympics? And what is your favorite sport? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.